Hello everyone. Hey, welcome back to the third and final hour of Once Upon a Game. Uh, season 2, Episode 9, where we are playing Ross Kalman's Life on Mars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just, we're getting ready to just hit up to, uh, hit to Mars right now. So it'd be super fun. Um, thanks for everyone who's, who's, who's sticking around. And uh, hello to the new faces who, who have joined us tonight. So I uh, hope, you, hope you enjoy Life on Mars, this, this super easy, super fun story game. So let's, yeah, it feels let's, like a lot of people showed up. Yeah. Let's uh let's let's jump let's jump right back into the action. Yeah. Um, yeah, space. Yeah, so space. Um we are we are on uh step six or or excuse me, month six of our voyage. This is going to be the last time we're on our spaceship. We're getting ready to descend onto the Martian surface, where we will then rotate over to the Martian surface board and and finish off our all our our 12, 12 scenes that we get on on the surface right so um who wants to go first on 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 month six of our voyage to mars i can go first why not yeah. I, okay i know i want to do who you left behind all right but i'm not sure who i left behind just yet so Dakota is like taking all the old circuit boards that are broken down over the journey, like starting with the one that he sabotaged. Yeah. And he's got like pliers and he pulls off like capacitors and resistors. And, you know, he's got like the soldering board, like, you know, he's, he scrapes all the connections off of the board. And then, you know, he, puts the new capacitors and resistors on and like maybe there's this like mini micro forge for like making computer chips that you know we don't have right now but of course they do because it's the future and yeah like it just spends like a week straight working on this and like i think everyone on the crew like knows that like he's got better things to do than working on this like all his other research like gets ignored. Okay. But I think like, also like if you disrupt him, like you don't know what's going to happen, and you need him to land the ship. So after like he's done, like he hooks it up into the main computer and like starts downloading the gigs of poetry. Oh my god! <laughs> Gigabytes, dang! Like. All the all the poetry is in the code, right? Yeah. And so, like, I guess maybe it's been like recording every keystroke and like how long each. Oh yeah, it's happened. probably got like, it, it's recording all of the the prior versions of the and like it's just like trash, trash. Each trash. each poetry like has this like this video and audio recording of like our conversations while we're writing it, and like. We can't bear to delete those because we need to like reference them, and so like it's just downloading all the poetry, the gigs and gigs of poetry, into this thing, and then it goes ding, and it's done. And so Dakota like pulls up this tiny little cube of like salt, and then he like puts it in like a metal, tiny metal sphere and attaches it to a necklace and wraps it around his neck. And that's when he's goes on the computer and he just deletes everything. Ooh. And then like he goes to the piloting chair and he sits in the piloting chair. He has like 15 minutes to, to get everything ready. And of course he does, he like flicks all the switches and the ship comes to life and he like has this like really cheap like lcd countdown timer on a stopwatch and it's like hooked up into the radio from mission control and they've synchronized it and everything and it's got a little a relativity adjustment knob and then he like just like pulls the retro burners and like does everything to make the ship land. So who do you uh, leave behind? 
I think he's going to leave Mew behind. Oh, that's what by the deleting of the um, of the poetry. Right. It's symbolic. Yeah. Oh, damn. I get it. Okay. I get it. I feel that. The oh. poetry is the nectar key of me. Dang. Okay. Good scene. Yeah. Um. Hmm. I think I have a scene. Okay. Okay, cool. Um. This is in. Um, in our cabin area, and um, Val comes over to um, I think Doctor Hune's cabin, and uh, you know knocks on the door. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, come in. And she comes in. And she's holding a, a a small um red hardbound book in her hand. And the audience recognizes this is the same book from earlier, um, when she'd gone through her stuff. Yeah, your your storybook, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but you probably don't recognize yeah, it. Of course. Um yeah. and so yeah, so she comes in and she doesn't say anything, she just like walks into your room. And uh, like sits on the wall, you know. Um, uh huh. Yeah. As you do. And uh, and she's like looking at the ground, and um, uh, what's wrong? Can I help you? Yeah. So yeah. Thank you. Um. So she's she's just looking at the ground for a minute after you after you say that, and uh, finally she looks up and she looks at you and she says. I'm worried. Uh, I, you have my attention, right? So, like, I, I'm like looking at you, waiting for you to finish your sentence, like about to describe more. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, I like cock my head, like, proceed. This whole, this whole mission, this whole journey. I don't know. It's not how you thought it would go, right? Yeah. You could say that. Look, we made it we made it six months, right? All we got are 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 twelve more days once we land, right? So It feels 20, like such a long trip for such a short for such a short stay. Well, they did send us all the supplies we need to get back. Well, it's not that I'm worried about. It's just, well, what if it's not enough time? You know. To leave something here unfinished after wasting a year of our goddamn lives. Uh, she... I think um I think I look at you and I'm like this this is one of the reasons why I became an astronaut. It's like did you ever have to tell a kid that they were going to be okay? When they and have, uh I think I think when you know um, they're not Yeah, okay. And I think we like get when you a know sudden... that you you say you you say that there's time and there's not enough time or wasted yeah. time. We get a flashback, and you see, um, you see Val sitting um, by a, a bedside with that children's book. Mm -hmm. And there's a small girl in the bed, and you zoom out further, and you realize that it's a hospital bed. And she doesn't say anything to you. Yeah. Um, but. Um, she takes she like she like grabs the book in both hands and says you're right 
and then um and she says um we do it for them and then she she leaves Um, okay, I know what I want to do. Uh, no, but like, where this last one, we just need like five seconds to just boom. <laughs> we are, um, we are breaking through my scene for the flight deck, we are breaking through the Martian atmosphere. Um, things are starting to rattle again. Um, all of, all of a sudden, uh, we hear um, a loud crash. Um, and all of a sudden, um, our, sh our, our ship, uh, the, the mana, um, starts going faster uh, to Mars. As, um, as Hune looks out the, the flight deck reflection window, and like we see part of a... Um, and ex uh, I want to say some sort of like uh, experiment or like some sort of like deployable lab of our ship just flies off our ship through the atmosphere and starts like tumbling off into Mars. Uh oh. Right? Um, and you just see I just like have like a shocked look on it uh, on my face as I'm like strapped in, and they're like, "Oh, that ain't good." And 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 we just hear you know like we hear like the the ship going like er, 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 like course correction needed. Um, and that will be, um, I think that... Well, way be, to put it on, eh? Yeah, that will be my scene. I mean, we, we, we lost something non-essential, right? Do we? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we have to use the rover. I don't know. But yeah, something, something, uh, a module fell off our ship. Cool. Was somebody in the module? No. Maybe. Oh, I hope not. Let's find out. Yeah. Whoa. Um. Cue beginning of Pitch Black. <laughs> I always have yeah. the hardest time picking out which one I want to do. Um. Mm -hmm. Anybody else got any recommendations for what I should pick? I'll die. This is the this is the last time you're in space before you land it to is. Mars, right? You need to go to the gully yeah. and become so, something. So what I would recommend is maybe maybe exploring that. How does your character feel about actually entering Mars? Yeah. Right? Very, very true. I think she's the only one who hasn't been to the gully yet. Yeah, I've benefited from the gully. But I haven't, I haven't actually been there myself. So yeah. Um, I'm in the galley, and I'm seeing. This is like the part where I'm really coping with the fact that. That our comments are gone. Yeah. And I think probably there was like some conversation between where like there were like like Dakota maybe told Mew about what went on with Hune and like words been spreading around. Either I've overheard it or whatever else. And I'm just... No, this isn't actually the galley. I've, I've changed my mind. It's actually the satellite. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because this is an important parallel to the very first scene that I did. I, I am just looking at... Like, if we were watching the show, we as viewers would know where the poetry was. Like, we recognize, like, the patterns of colors of text and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Okay. 
but like sure, the I little you. like seafoam green comments aren't there anymore. Of course, they're seafoam green. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why wouldn't they be? Yeah. And I'm just. like biting the inside part of my lip and I'm just going down to where I eat and I'm I have my arms on the table and I have my hands sort of like clasped together like this uh huh and I'm just like, I, I think in this scene, I'm the only one there. So I can have like a little bit of a soliloquy. I'm just like, I keep having to give up things over and over again. What's. What the fuck is next? And that's the end of that scene. So you're leaving, um, you're leaving Dakota behind in a way. You're, you're, go, yeah. you're pushing D- Dakota past. Yeah. Okay. You're moving past Dakota. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Because I have to choose to abort this relationship. Yeah. Cool. Well, now we go to the we go to surface time. Mm. So I'm gonna grab the tokens, bring everything over as we go to surface land, the land of surfaces. What color is Mars? Dull is it gray. Made of caramel? <laughs> no. Damn. Um, it is very. I have so many cavities. It was made of caramel. So, um. Now, uh, after the end of each scene, the the ship will move closer and closer. So we have 12 scenes. Um, there's also a new protocol introduced into this part of the game, uh, which is pink, which is you have to describe deploying this module before you can choose and use it first. Okay? So um, now we have the options of choosing the satellite, the galley, the cabin, the recreation, the workshop, the lab, the rover. I had going below. We have the agricultural uh, agriculture dome and the return shuttle. Um, the rover can take you to some other sites um, back on the other sheet that are far away from from our house. Those are options. So, who would like to do something? I like to go on the rover. Ooh, rover. Okay, so you have to first describe deploying this module. Okay. So, sorry, I'm having trouble. Just I have so many character names right now. I have to actually take a second and think, what's the character? Okay. So Dakota um, has landed a ship, and I think so. You, that... you fixed you fixed the problem. What problem? Uh the thing that fell off. Well, we landed right. We're on Mars. Yeah. Is, so, is... yeah, I guess I fixed the problem. So yeah, so the the landing looks fine. Oh yeah, sure. Okay, That'd cool. Okay. Like if if it weren't fine, we'd be dead. All right. That's that's how landings work in space. I mean, yeah. Yeah, there's zero. There's there's there is totally fine, and everyone's dead. There's that's nothing. You're, there's nothing. You're a like loose fine. cannon, Captain Dakota. God damn it! You're the <laughs> best pilot we have. You know, you pilot. Yeah. Uh, so let's see here. So the rover, I'm trying to. The rover looks like it looks like a two seater motorcycle. It's got a really big wi- wheels, like the wheels are a foot wide, and uh-huh. they got like cool, like black and red uh, sides on the wheel, so that the Martian dust doesn't ruin any of the uh, the workings of the engine. And also, they have these goggles that uh, link into the uh, the radar on the rover. Okay. Uh, so, 
the rover. So like, wear helmets for our helmets. Absolutely. Okay. So the rover. What is what is going on with Chet? So there's actually like this a store on the side of the ship, and it just opens like, mm-hmm. and the rover just like shoots out, uh, and it just like flies to the air for a bit before landing in the Martian dust because Mars has lower gravity, so it's totally fine. Um, oh, absolutely. And then he just drives away on the motorcycle. And he is going to take the rover to the derelict, derelict rover. You have to take somebody with you. I have to take somebody with me? Yes. That is how it works. Where did it say that? So every every scene, back. yep. So so there's another protocol. Uh, whenever you see that yellow cross, you choose another crew member and describe this together. Then roll a die and describe the result by yourself. So when you choose the Wait. rover, you flip to the back. Um, then choose another member of the crew to accompany you and select one of the destinations. So I'm trying to find this. So this is actually over here to the left. It's above life on Mars. Um, it's at the top here, and you're choosing the derelict rover. Oh, I thought that was only for that. No, the rover. Um, I thought there was a separate location entirely. Okay. The I rover. See. Yeah. No, you have all of the options here, right? Oh. When you choose the rover, that means you're taking the rover out to one of these locations. Okay. Taking Val. Okay. Okay. Where are you? So uh, first, yeah. first you okay. do a scene, you and I do a scene together of why we're here, and then once we call that a scene, you roll the die and whatever sure. comes up, you use that as inspiration as like an epilogue. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. So to what degree? Thank do you, you Kelsey, for doing my job for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I had this really like specific idea. Um. Okay, I'll just tell you my idea, and then you can modify it. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking that the Derelict rover was a rover uh, that we launched, uh, but it has an AI on it that would help d- determine like what it needs to see. Mm. And at some point, the radar dish or whatever, the transmission dish on the rover failed. Okay. So it's had 15 years of data because it's nuclear-powered. And we need to get that data. Okay. And okay. the reason why is because, you know, it had like tools that could theoretically replicate whatever a human could do on Mars. So it's like so, all those stories about how, you know, a man on Mars could do what the rovers have in like 15 minutes. This thing has had 15 years. Gotcha. We need to get that rover. Um, why is val with you specifically val well from a narrative it is uh, if, i mean it is val. it is it that al, a val said hey the two of us are going out there because i'm fine with that i just i'm trying to figure yeah out how it's i mean this is this is this is why we're here i think the commander needs to be why we're here okay so i, like I said i said hey, we need to get, you know, it's time to go on the mission to get that rover. Okay, okay. And you have the technical expertise to come with me. Like, I'm trying to, like, get a feel for the power balance in the scene. I think Val needed to go because, you know, it's the main mission. I think this is... Part of the mission to Mars is requiring the, right. the retrieval of this, right? So that's what you're trying to say, right? Yeah. Yeah. I so think so you're... Is, is doing the researching because he's the pilot. Now we've landed. We have no need for a pilot, so the pilot's doing the researching. And I think that he had another reason why he wanted to go. Okay. And I think there's like this thing, like, like oh. maybe Bell said, like Dakota, it's time to go, but Dakota was probably already suiting up, and he was like, "Yes, of course." Can I can I make a suggestion? Sure. What if it was supposed to be um, originally uh, Mew and Dakota to go get it? You know, the pilot and the and the engineer. It could but be. but you um yeah, but, now you, we know but but someone requested 
uh, that um, that the commander mm, someone. And, and someone and them. someone else go, right? I don't know. Yeah, how does that? I don't think Decoy would request it. Then you would request it. You don't even have to accept my suggestion, right? You can be like, "That's that's fine. That's nice, Eric." No, go, I mean, if neither of us would suggest it, <laughs> right? uh, as as a sort of like play on the drama that's unfolding on you guys, right? That's not the that's not the kind of drama that Dakota is doing. Is it the kind of drama that Mew is doing? No, I don't think so. Okay, then yeah, it's just the commander needed to go to this consistent yep. point. That's totally. fine. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Um, Maybe the commander has secret access codes that only the commander can know. About. Oh yeah, that's that's another one. That yeah. makes perfect yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right, so we're we're zooming over the Martian desert on this two seated Tron bike. Martian. I was thinking more like Akira, but yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, okay, I could also. I was actually going to ask, is, is it like an Akira bike? But is to be Tron? honest with you, the Tron, Tron, and the Akira bikes are essentially, exactly the same, essentially the same, except for obviously like the the laser trail, right? Like, I think there's definitely this dust trail. Laser trail is totally yeah. required. There's this dust trail that coming up behind the. Uh, the bike and the tracking laser from so we have some spaceship is like shooting at it so like there's this cool like oh laser so there is like an infrared light. laser you can see on the surface of, of yeah, the, it's like this the... tracking it's like it's a yeah. ranging it's a range fighter laser okay yeah so it's I, I, with, with some sweet sweet cyberpunk tracks going on it oh as, absolutely yeah okay as you as you make it to the, the derelict rover like, okay yeah you know, I, I think that this the entire trip over there it was like hours of just the two of us on this uh you know tron bike yeah totally um, totally silent total total silence for about mm -hmm. the entire trip that's fine because i have totally have the cyberpunk techno music going on in my helmet that's perfect yeah and so um i, I figure as we, we we like crest a dune we see it and finally val perks up and like points um Dakota makes the adjustment. Mm -hmm. Do we see do we see a roll? Uh, well uh, yeah, I mean is the yeah, are you ready to, to roll or do sure, you let's roll this dice? Right. Can I roll one d six? Yep. Four. What you take is what I wanted. Alright. What happens? You you get to narrate it from here. So we get up to the rover, and uh, we we have to follow its like a uh, radioactive trail, and we find it like laying like tip sided on its side, and it's like its wheels are still spinning, and it's like in this like weird like very shallow canyon, that seems to go off into the distance and coming down off this mountain. And uh, like Dakota speculates, well, it might be a lava tube. And um, he gets off the bike, you know, he, he checks uh, Bell's seals and Bell checks his, and everything's fine. Um, and then the two of them go over and they start like working on the rover. And you know, Dakota like starts downloading all of this stuff into the blank data page that used to hold all his poetry. And um, then like he notices something and he must have downloaded his complete. He goes over to like the side of the rover and like just yanks off this tool. And he's like, misses with the tool a little bit, looks at the file and he's like, I'm gonna stay here and work on the rover. It may have it modified this tool in a way that we hadn't expected. But uh, I can't go back without you. We've only got one rover. I'll take the rover back. You don't have enough air. They'll be fine. I'm not leaving you here, Dakota. Kind of like size, and 
then he like hmm I want to say like he pulls out like a flare pistol and he points it at Val and says yes you are whoa whoa <laughs> Dakota. At least give me the data. It's like, oh yes, of course. And he he lowers the flare pistol and he hands Bell the data slate. All right, so um I think um I think she just takes it and she um uh, and she rides off uh back over the hill. Okay, and last thing you see is Dakota looking back at that lava tunnel and it's a tool in his hand and then he just starts walking towards the mountain. All right. They're just gonna leave you there? No. All right, we'll find out. Yep. Uh, by the way, guys, it is twelve oh four. Um, so I think we're gonna finish this round, and then we're gonna have one more final round. Uh, we won't okay. we won't be able to do the uh, a third round. All right. So we're because we'll, we're, we'll we're just, gonna run just out of time. edit on lava tubes. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> no. Love it. So, okay. Um, let's let's scoot back over to to Mars here. Um, so we had one scene from Dakota. Uh, who else would like to go? Um, let's see. Yeah. I want to actually look at the the screen here and see which what are my options for something. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um I think I am going to go the satellite And uh, we're going to see uh, a report to Earth. And this is before um, the scene uh, that we just did, actually. Uh-huh. Um, this is like day one. And Val is, you know, in the satellite room and she's composing a message. And it's got like a bunch of attachments of charts and readings and stuff. And, but she, uh, she's, she's uh, recording like an audio um, transmission. Record. Okay. Yeah. And she's saying, We finally finished setting up the uh, the base. Uh, all systems seem to be in place. There was a bit of a uh, hiccup in the landing, but uh, luckily Dakota is a crack pilot. We had no problems uh, once uh, he took over manually. Um, but one thing I have to say, though, is it's it's more beautiful than I could have imagined. And the pictures from the rovers, they, they don't do this justice. And well, it's not what we're here for. We've got the uh, lab um, uh, ready to be deployed that is next on uh, the agenda. Our uh, our systems are all looking good. Uh, we finally uh, got settled in, and uh, I think uh, the real uh, the real meat of it will begin tomorrow. Uh, mm. Commander Valentina signing off. Send. Cool. Um. Uh, 
So I think I wanted to do um, I think I want to do lab. That's okay. Sure. Well, I just said it was next, so that's appropriate. I know. That's kind of why I'm choosing it now. Um, so the lab, everybody. Um, so I have to describe setting up the, the lab. Um, so the lab was always part of the of the of the ship. Um, it was it was it was already on board. Um, I think that. The lab and setting it up is more about getting it ready for the experiments that were brought on board and getting the experiments set up. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is uh, I start like unfolding a lot of like the panels that turn into sort of like shelves and um, and like tables and stuff like that. And I start setting up various I guess I guess um I don't want to say like growing things because like that's what the agriculture thing is, um. What am I testing? Um. Oh, I, I guess I guess I'm actually setting up a medical. I know I'm, I'm tag yeah I'm I'm actually testing a um us I'm I'm testing I'm testing humans on Mars. Um. So what I'm what I'm doing is uh. I'm setting up sort of like a med bay kind of thing nice uh, for the lab and um and I, and I think I think what we do uh, is you see me start setting up like a computer and what we see is um like me a very like clinical setting um you see me like kind of like looking at a computer screen and so like the camera actually lay its scroll like an over the shoulder shot and you actually see my face in the computer screen as I, I'm like like typing away on it going like um like you know uh blah 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 uh Dr. Hune uh calibrating uh running biometric data scans and like you know, hear I'm like more like type stuff um and and then you uh then you see a pause as, as like the screen kind of like does like one of those like little like green little like anal analysis things go down down his face and down his pictures and stuff and you and you see like the computer uh vocally respond back saying like uh good morning dr hewn uh calibration scans successful uh current heart rate you know 65 beats per minute uh current bone body mass like 80 percent of earth you know and that kind of stuff like it starts reading off these things and he's like excellent uh so i think the experiments would be um to keep track of of, of people and make sure that they're okay um at, see, basically see what um what being on mars does to does the human psyche as well as space right that's kind of why i think that's kind of yeah. why i'm brought along on, on board anyways so yes yeah, okay is that the end of what you're doing then? damn it damn it senor yeah scan for biomatter shit that's what i should have done <laughs> well some other time no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Just spend the one stress and do the flashback, and you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Uh, anybody got a good devil's bargain? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so that's my turn. Um, move it over. Uh, Adam slash Mew, uh, you have this turn, and then we're all gonna have one more final turn, and then then we end it for the evening. If you're okay with Mew being reminded about her relationship that she had to end. Take an extra die. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> all the relationships you had to end? Yep. Everything all, all of that. So much. So much feels. So much. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna deploy this workshop. Um, we've probably gotten, like, a couple of samples from, like, kind of, like, the geology here and stuff like that, so, um, I've been kind of working on making this workshop the whole time because this is, like, part of the plan. Um, 
So that's getting set up. I'm taking things out of the shuttle and moving them into here so that we can actually get this all set up. Ooh, okay. Um, I am going to... So, like, we have this... I think we have um, the correct setup to make, like, a small... Oh, darn, that's a lab, not a workshop. Um, slightly different. Okay. Um, I'm blanking. Where am I going with this? Well, you're at uh, the so workshop. You, yeah, you're at the workshop. You just described deploying the workshop, so now you have to answer one of the, the blue prompts. What is broken? How do you, yeah, how you fix what is broken or yeah, what you are missing. missing. Yeah. It could be literal or figurative what is missing. Can I answer both if I want to? Uh, is it the same answer in both of them? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, aim for aim for one, but if you the question about because of course you can, there. of course you can, but like your the scope of your of your scene is, is one question, right? Okay, gotcha. Yeah, Let's see. Um, so I think I'm going to. I'm going to find some way to get rid of the the journal that I've been writing in for this amount of time and the journal that Dakota gave me as a gift. Like, I really wanted this to be a lab so that we could have, like, a scientific setting where there would have been, like, a safe place to burn them or something like that. But I'm... I'm curious how how to yeah, make that work. Like, I mean, it, it, it would totally have, like, they're, they're what you were missing. Yeah. What if you can't find them? Uh, hmm. totally have, like, a or maybe like here. what I'm missing when I come back to the workshop. Like we, we just get like in the off screen, like zoom in of I've just like shallow buried both of these books on Mars. Okay. Yeah. Like I just went out in this space suit and just tossed them out and then just kicked some dirt over them. First litterer on Mars. Yeah, totally. <laughs> All right. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's definitely symbology right there. Yeah. I, I think I'm kind of answering both questions with that one. Yeah. Okay, so then now we move to our last scenes each. So we reset, take all the pieces off the board. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit for our viewers. What um, what would we like to do? Who wants to get, who wants to have their last scene? I'm kind of waiting to see the resolution of um, of Dakota. Kind of, okay. yeah. Dakota has to be on the rover. That but makes who sense. Comes with me, of course, it's Moo. Is that all right with you? And we will go. Yeah, the... we we gotta wrap that up. We can't leave that un untied. We go mm. to the dunes. Uh, I I guess you know Mew has. Well, she, the, the well Mew, Mew might be there over the radio or something. I like, have to choose another computer to describe this too. So which one? What? So want me to? I'm gonna go over to the back side of the screen here. So we're just, we selected the rover, which means we go over to one of these uh, five five options. Um, what are you? What are we doing? I want to go to the dunes. Okay. Yeah, maybe it's over the radio or something. I'd rather if it wasn't actually. Okay. So she's there. Yeah, she's there. 
and she took the rover there. Yeah. Like, there's something she needs to do there. Like, you know. Okay. You got to do. I had work to do, and now I'm not doing it. Okay. Maybe it's like some some tech, new technical reporting base. How are you still alive? We're gonna roll the die and find out. Okay. Don't 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 worry about it. Okay. That's fair. Two silence. So. I assume this means that we can't actually have a conversation. Well, no, you're so, supposed to have the conversation first and then roll a die. Oh, oh, we're supposed to have a conversation first? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the resolution. That's sort of like the epilogue of the scene. You have you have your conversation first. Um, you you do your, your kind of like talk and you, you narrate the scene together. And then when you're ready, you roll the die. And then you, you resolve the scene based on the die roll. Okay, fine. Um, so... Dakota, okay, so Dakota is there, um, like, um, while Mew is working on the new technical installation, uh, Dakota, like, just walks out of nowhere, and he's Mm -hmm. in a suit, and um, he walks up to Mew. And he takes the necklace that he made in the lab and he gives it to her. And he says, I, I made a mistake on the ship. Uh, you weren't the person that I wanted you to be. And I'm not even convinced I even exist anymore. But this is, this is all I was able to save. And I think that, you know, I could have just transmitted it to Earth, but you know, I didn't have that right. But I want you to bring it back to Earth for me. I think this entire scene is just very quiet and like it's literally like the silence of space right or like the silence of being a planet without like natural life or the things on earth that we have that make like tons of little noises that we're used to and things like that because there's definitely an atmosphere of Mars so we can definitely hear each other yeah um, I think um, Mew looks back up at you uh, after trying to avoid your gaze this whole time. Like she's gonna avoid your gaze again right after, but sure, she's gonna be like, I think you were very good for me. You taught me a lesson. Yeah. That's over now. I made a mistake, and I made a mistake before the one that I made with, that we made together, but that I made with you. What was that mistake? I guess there was one before that, too, and another before that and another before that but mm. life is full of all mistakes. the same mistake i keep trying to build things up and i get better i build myself up i i get degrees i i use my degrees to put things together i i make i make things because i feel like it it's something i have to do and it's it's not something i have to do And, and you're just what's showing this to me 
I have to learn my lesson because what I'm creating is is going to hurt me unless I get something out of the act of creating it itself. And that's all that matters. And I, I thought it, there was something else to it, but there isn't. Thank you for this gift, but um, and then I think she whispers to herself, maybe I shouldn't make any hasty decisions just yet. I feel like we need another hour to play out this scene. <laughs> <laughs> of course. How much time do you guys want to give us? No, I got I got gym in the morning. I cannot go that much later. Okay, see you in there because that's pretty profound. I think she drops it on the ground and and just like foot yeah. smashes it, breaks the chip. No. Damn. I think the clue just like she has to her. destroy. She ha she needs to bury this tendency she has mm -hmm. it's ruining her life well let's oh. roll the dime now and see what happens you did you got silence we got the silence so now there's just that's it okay i got i got a scene do it do you uh, see we are going to um we're gonna go to the return shuttle Mm. Um, the return shuttle is like the Mav uh, from the Martian. It was sent here before us, anticipating us for us to get back. Um, it's already preloaded, uh, ready to go. Um, I am going through it, doing a couple, um, just you know, like checks, make sure that everything's there, like O2 levels, all that kind of stuff works. And um, what we see, you see me. Uh, look out sort of like the cockpit part or or like whatever the glass part of the return shuttle is uh you see me like look out in the horizon and you just see this like wall of brown just like inching towards us uh and and you you hear me over the radio uh say to um like commander like uh commander val um uh, that storm looks way worse than than mission control anticipated And you, like you see my 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 face, um, like just in kind of like terror, as like you see like my reflection uh, in in the glass, and then behind the glass you just see like this wall of just like brown dust like inching towards us, right? So. I just what I was afraid of is the response that you get. Yeah, that's I think that's all. Um, that's all I say. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, okay. GM move. Show signs of a looming threat. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do I want to deal with that or do I want to go backwards? Um, this is the last scene for you. <coughs> so do, do whatever you want of all time unless um Mew wants to go right now or do you want to round this out um okay in that case i am gonna go um to the agricultural dome mm -hmm. so the agricultural dome is a um, completely prefab module that was um, uh, a part of our spaceship actually like on our way over here and we were using it as a uh, um, 
hydroponics bay and then we installed it and it like expanded out mm -hmm. and um now it's been uh, now it's growing more and better or however that goes and uh more potent <laughs> yeah um and more varieties and uh we see val uh she's walking down the aisles of these plants and she's running her hands along like the leaves of the different plants and we see her um a memory uh that is very reminiscent of the same moment of her walking along rows of plants running her fingers along their leaves but here uh in the in the memory it's on earth and um, the garden is uh, in her own backyard. And there's a, a girl there, um, like kneeling up ahead in the, in the row, um, who looks to be about uh, probably five or six. And uh, she has a little bucket and she's um, plucking snails uh, out of the uh, garden and putting them in a bucket. And uh, she uh, pulls one off the underside of a leaf and drops in the bucket right as uh, Val walks up. And she says, uh, the, the little girl holds up the bucket and says, it's almost halfway full, mommy. And Val looks down and uh and just kind of like half smiles because she's both like proud that that she's that her daughter's been uh cleaning the garden of snails but also kind of disgusted of this bucket of snails at the same time and then um uh we cut back to the present as she's standing there and she's reached like the end of the row um and is facing like a window wall um and we get the audio from the previous scene oh of hyun saying you know this 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 looks worse commander than this thought. storm looks worse than mission control thought yeah right and then she looks up and just so happens that she's facing the exact same direction. Yeah. And so now we see her face as she says, this is exactly what I was afraid of. And like, it's totally pale ash and white. And um, there's a, a hint of panic in her eyes. All right. Mew, Mew, take us out. Last. Last scene. Good oak. Alrighty. I need to scoot back over into the commercial stuff. Um I think I'm just gonna head think into the galley. Okay. We're gathering. Mm hmm I think I'm there, and um, like I think we're probably all together, maybe at this point. Like I want a lot of your feedback because this is the last scene of the game. So, 
Well, we can do an epilogue, we'll be... right? We'll do we'll do an epilogue and okay, talk about it. Sure. Sure. So yeah. Okay. Sure. Um. Yeah, let's maybe do my daily routines instead. Um. I mean, if you wanted to say that Dakota came back, that's how you would do it, I guess. Yeah. Um, but your daily routines, let's see what they are. I think um, after she comes back from that, she does all she needs to do in the lab and setting up the workshop and taking care of things like that and making sure our experiments are started just like yeah. just like checking a second time on our experiments and stuff like that and um that's really all she does anymore she does her job and then she doesn't do anything else she just mainly stares out the window and um, makes like light, inconsequential conversation with the rest of the um, with the rest of the crew. She knows her job, and then when there's extra time, she doesn't put. She doesn't do anything else. Hmm. Hmm. Okay then. Um, is that your full routine? Yeah. Okay, so then epilogue. Um, do we do we see uh, Dakota come back? No. You, uh, you see the entrance, like a tunnel into a cave, and there's an empty spacesuit, and that's it. Yeah, you would you would freeze probably before you get run out of oxygen. Well, it, depends. well it depends on which side of Mars you're on. Yeah. It, it all depends how you train. want to destroy it end, but I'm not going to yeah. end it. Okay. End it according to your own. You well, know. I think the rest of us have to abort the mission and and leave because uh, yeah. of because of the dust storm. Um. I, I agree. I think that 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 we we leave, we make it out with the three of us, but uh, we didn't finish what we came for. No, not at all. And and we're short of pilot. Yep. Well, Commander, hope you remember your piloting skills. Um. So, um, that's the game. That's that's life on Mars. So uh, let's do a little. I know I'm a little bit uh, behind the eight ball in terms of time, so like let's let's just do a quick little brief uh, post mortem, right? I, I always love the post mortem chats of the game and everything, right? Right. So yeah, what do we, we think? Do so we like it? Uh, I, I I really enjoyed it. Uh, I was interested in it before, and then watching you guys play on Monday uh, really like made me excited to play it, and I really enjoy playing it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I love Ross's work. I, I love I love everything he does. This is this is good stuff. Yeah. Um, I I'm worried about hmm? playing uh, Fall of Magic because like when I watch people play, like I couldn't think of anything for any of the places. Mm -hmm. But I felt like you know actually being in the game and making choices through the character it made like choices so much easier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good point. Um, I know I know a lot of people in chat were, were talking and, and giving some pretty cool ideas for, for scenes, <laughs> which I, I, I definitely stole. I stole one of them for sure uh, about the data space and the um, and the poetry. I was uh, I was already like planning that before I flipped over and saw that chat had mentioned it. And then you're like, oh, yeah, that sounds really cool. And then you did it. And I'd been I like it had been it, like as, and you hated me. You, you wanted ways to, to stab you. me in the face. I didn't <laughs> hate you. Uh, I think you did it really well. Um, but I was just that was that was definitely on my mind, yeah. too. So. A couple uh, I found myself a couple times watching the inner the, the dialogue between um, uh, Dakota and Mew being like, 
what is going to happen? I have no idea how this is going to play out. And each time you guys surprised me. Uh, so I, I thoroughly enjoyed actually uh, you guys for that. Mm-hmm. It's so painful to me because it doesn't fit any of the narrative structures I know. It was so good at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, does it does a good so I guess does it why does a good story have to fit a narrative structure that you, that you're that you were aiming for instead of it letting it run, run on its own? I, I just have like these uh, these like, the, like it's so easy like to, to use tropes to tell a story. Yeah, right. That's that's and when you go against them, it feels incomplete. Mm. Hmm. Interesting. I don't think I have that. Um, going, I don't know. For me, it's more about um, when it's I. It's like when you sing a song, and then the notes aren't in tune, or like someone misses a word, and you just know it in your deep inside your soul. Like it hurts real bad. There's a uh, okay. I get what you're saying, and that there is. I do. I do follow a sort of like narrative pace to a lot of things that I want to do, but that's only like like basically knowing when to judge to introduce the tilt kind of like if I if I want to steal from fiasco or like mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Knowing when the tilt happens in but especially between either a relationships or b events, um, like knowing knowing like when to exactly like you know punch it. Uh, oh sure. Right, like that's that takes that takes time. Um, mm-hmm. Eric, you're talking about intellectually. I'm talking about emotionally. Oh, okay. intellectually, I loved it. Emotionally, there's a big hole in my heart. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Well. Um. Yeah. I, I, I want to say. Um. I did not wind. Um. You, I I didn't do what I planned to do. Like at the at the outset, I was thinking about. Uh, originally, I was gonna have uh, a male character, uh, and I changed my mind at the last second, and. Uh, like the whole. Um, like daughter dying of cancer totally only happened because of that scene. It was a split second decision that like yeah. when you were talking, like you were like, have you ever seen this? Have you ever like my brain just, I suddenly like that scene I described popped into my head and I was like, yes and this is how it happened yeah. exactly i was like yeah. yes let me let me just interject this right here because it's it's yeah. important so. i feel i feel bad i didn't build on it actually a little bit i actually did enjoy that one i was going to talk to you uh in a, in a little <laughs> bit being like uh there were a few times you mentioned things to me that i feel like i failed to follow up on in a way that that felt good um, I, it was you still were, you were it's bringing so good things no so yeah uh, I, I was also super curious with this game because I really love, I really, really, really love Fall of Magic, and I hope, I hope one day to be able to make a game that's like structured similarly to this, uh, only because this is just such a good way to like tell a story and get people interested uh, in role playing games. I think, I think this is an amazing format for for getting people who've never done a game to to try, especially if they're not interested in like the board gaming stuff, right? Like the, this would totally fail to someone who wants like the tactical Final Fantasy stuff, right? But um, mm-hmm. yeah. like if you want, if you wanted to say like, hey, uh, let's tell a story about the good, the bad, and the ugly, uh, Wild West style, um, you know, it's like, oh yeah, let's let's tell a story about it. All right, let's tell a story about how we get revenge, or or let's tell a story about uh, you know, saving Private Ryan and like our our path through Germany to rescue a dude, um, something like that, right? Uh, that that would feel very good for me. Um, so you want this kind of game, but for a war setting? Yeah, I think I think this story, this this type of structure of a game, would appeal to a, a larger audience of people who may who are not interested in the board game parts of games. Which, I'm, I for me, when I'm thinking of this, I think my target audience is my dad, right? Like my dad loves war movies, and like he loves he loves like that sort of stuff, right? Um, so if I could, and, and he, I mean, he he grew up on John Wayne, right? He's he's a he's a you know, he's like I think he's sixty something now. I don't remember. Oh God, <laughs> I don't remember my dad's actual age. But um, <laughs> yeah, spoilers. Yeah. My dad's uh, not real. My 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 dad. I <laughs> uh, never. No. Uh, so like I, I always think of games like, hmm, how could I get my dad to try what I love? 
right? This is this is this is the type. You know, I I love gaming. I love I love doing this. I love I love streaming, and I love playing games while streaming, right? I I love I love this dialogue, this conversation, this, this well, fun movie there, making that we make, make right? Your dad come on your show. And say, I was just gonna yeah. say that. I was gonna say and this is where I, Eric is announcing see, that he's gonna have yeah. a special My, father son episode with his dad. I would love to do that in June for Father's Day, right? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. My dad. Right. My dad is not one for like fantasy. He doesn't really care. I mean, he like Lord, he loves Lord of the Rings, right? Because like everyone loves Lord of the Rings. But like my dad bought Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, and then okay. threw it out because it wasn't about fixing motorcycles <laughs> <laughs> and motorcycle maintenance. Yeah. Right. Um, I need to finish reading yeah. that book. Ugh. So it's uh, good, yeah. but oh man, I have changed so much since I read it the first time. Ah, uh, yep. What you could really? Oh, Eric is really Jesus, is what he's saying. Okay, thanks, Nanosphere. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. Uh, S- Signor uh since since you were so into microscope, making a more general setting would work, but hard to make, so that you can make a different game in a different setting. Yes, um, Unforgiven would be a perfect fall of magic thing, actually. Yeah, uh, that's that's a that's a really good example of of what I'm thinking, right? Or like Red Dead Redemption or Red Dead Revolver. Uh, or good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, a story for like a, a group of travelers who who have like a past that you explore in the present, uh, that kind of stuff as you're traveling through the West and encountering all those tropes and archetypes, uh, stereotypes. Um, but like my, I don't know. Like my my dad might be into that. That'd probably be a good one. But my dad really likes actually like World War Two fighter pilots. So like I'm actually thinking about night witches would be an yeah. option. But um, because like he might get into that, but I'd, something more would actually would be like World War One pilots would be more him and, and his and his brother. So like my uncle, like if I could if I could just make a game for those two, I think I would realize like wow, gaming has a potential to re- reach a far wider audience than what it is doing, and that's really what I want to see. I I want to see everyone fuck like I want this to be like normal, like yeah, like what did you do? Like oh I I played a game with my with my friends, right? Or like I played a game with my family, like like this shit should be in schools. Uh, this shit should be uh, like just like a normal thing that you do. Like telling stories is is what mm-hmm. you, is is such a an amazing ability. You know what? Eric, does anybody in your family tell war stories? Uh, no, they read books and stuff. My 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 dad never was. My dad couldn't serve due to like bio, biology stuff. I have like uncles like, and yeah. that served in the in the yeah. wars in like Vietnam and Korea. Yeah, and telling those stories is like a major bonding thing that we do. Yeah. World War II pi- fighter pilots, as they move bases across the Pacific front, might pique his interest. Absolutely, uh, that would he would he would play the shit out of that game. Uh, I would definitely do something like that. So, what I was thinking, um, as a terms of a game, and this is something I need to do, uh, Carolina Death Crawl, uh, and modifying it for Saving Private Ryan. Uh, for those who don't know, that's a game by Jason Morningstar. It's card based. It's somewhat competitive. Uh, Everybody is. Their original game is about um, Union soldiers being trapped behind Confederate lines and trying to make it back uh, in the American Civil War, and someone's trying to make it back alive. Um, only one person survives at the end. Um, mm. But this is this is so beyond the topic of, of life on Mars. <laughs> We've just been drawn into games that Eric's dad might enjoy. <clears throat> uh, so, at least I have people yeah. who are worse than me now. <laughs> uh, dark, so, Dark Lavender, uh, why do you say that? Why do you think you're worse? Um, no, I'm saying you're worse. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's fair. That's totally fair. Because I'm retrograde. I'm, I'm bad about vectoring into different topics, and oh. then you, you did it. Anyway, no, yeah. Like I so. Did. All right, so let's but let's cool. Let's do some final thoughts and outros, guys. Anything? Anything you want to add? Oh, yeah. um, I knew you were talking. I'm sorry. Did mm-hmm. you? Okay. Go ahead. I'll say my thing after. Okay. Uh, I know you were talking about in the previous one about uh, doing the deploying and uh, how it seemed uh, really strange to have to have an entire scene that's just, just deploying a thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I felt like that, that I, and I didn't play it that way. I, I went with what you had decided, but I, I feel like having it be that way is a conscientious decision of what you are able to do you have a limited time on mars and to have to spend burn, burn a, a thing doing it 
Yeah, yeah. See, and 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 see, like like I felt like like you were um, you're like oh this is a uh, this is already I, sent here everything's ready for us. Yeah. As we're I actually no well I what what happened was um I actually like during the break I reread the rules. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is exact, this is explicitly what Ross says for, for the pink one, right? For, for deploying, uh, describe deploying this module always chooses first. Players have to describe deploying a module before they can use the other protocol listed on that space. For example, the first time I go to the workshop, I describe it, I describe setting it up later, comma, on your turn. Now that the workshop is set up, you can use the other protocol listed here. It makes it sound like you're using it conjunctive, uh, conjunct, uh, uh, at the same time. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Uh, I, I can't it say conjunctively. I, I read, I read, I read it also, there. and the that's not what in, that's not what you I, got the I, first time. I feel like that comma is ambiguous. Right. And that, later, what does later on your turn mean? Is that the consecutive yeah. turns or or this turn? Exactly. Um, uh, I, the, I feel like yeah. a word of of later. That's what on your next turn or yeah, later the first, on your current turn yeah instead of your turn like because that's yeah. uh exactly the first time i played this game i thought that exact thing but then i went back and read it and i'm like that makes it so actually when you have later on your turn like that sounds like you're talking about this turn like your turn because this is your turn you're doing your, your but your at the round. same time the rules also say that you choose only one thing uh even when there's multiple choices i know and it's... i it, yeah. I don't know. I'll 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 reach out to Ross and see what he says. It reads to me like they're talking about two different people. The first player sets mm. up the workshop. The second player yeah. goes to the workshop. Right. Oh. Like like that is kind of what I got the feeling of. Um, but like, interesting. how it just long? Means that we saved us all like one turn. Like we all got yeah. into turn. This so is yeah. Properly, in the game. good question. Uh, so, so Signor asked a good question. How long would a Mars mission be so that they don't miss their chance to get back? Um, it depends on when you get launched, right? Uh, you have a window. Uh, I posted a link earlier. Okay, uh, let me see if I can find it again. Cool. Yeah, it, it would depend. It would entirely, entirely depend. But you could stay there for six months. You could stay there for ten years. Here we go. So you need to go to this website, and then you need to look at the date you leave, and then you need to look at the date you come back. So, and it's a big giant chart. You can figure it out. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we're way over time budget. Um, so this has been Once Upon a Game, uh, the episode nice. nine. Um, normally episode ten would be this Sunday. Uh, that has to get canceled. I'm doing a Twitch meetup here in Seattle. Uh, so if anyone's viewing here and you're interested in Twitch in Seattle, uh, there is a meetup uh, to, on, on that day, and you should go and, and Google it and find it because it's super awesome. I met the person who's uh, uh, I found I found the streamer who's, who's running it, and she's super cool. I'm so glad I met her. I'm so glad to meet, finally meet her in person. Um, so like I'm doing that. Uh, so I'm sorry there's going to be no streams on a Sunday, and my Sunday's normally like my mega stream day. But um, tomorrow uh, tomorrow there's no stream. Friday, I'm coming back with The Witcher. Uh, Saturday, I'm doing some more games after dark. Probably more Darkest Dungeon because, God, I want to see the final content in that game. Uh, uh, this came out. I um, need to play yeah, it more. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do oh, some of that. the actual Darkest Dungeon. Yeah, Dungeon. it finally got released on Tuesday. I was playing it for yeah, a couple hours. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Um, my, I'm um, tempted to play it now. Yeah. My uh, my vods are on YouTube, uh, so everything like this. If you guys came, if you came uh, late, uh, my vods will be tomorrow um, available. Uh, probably like midday or so. I usually uh, make them public or on my lunch break, so like around like noon Pacific. Uh, other than that, uh, thanks guys so much for tuning in. Everybody, thank you so much. Oh my God, I like everyone today. Uh, I want to thank all my players. I want to thank I, obviously I want I want like Will slash Golden H. I want to thank Kelsa. I, I want to thank Adam. Adam, thanks for returning back to the show, man. Uh, I love that. Love having yeah. you on here. I know, I know it's, I know it's a little bit out of your comfort element, right? And I know it's kind of hard for you to make it all the time, but like, you, you're like, you're getting it, right? Like it's especially like it's, it's good, man. Uh, I, I know, I know, improv is, is kind of hard, and it, it's a skill that you have to practice to get good at, right? It's, it's yeah, not something exactly. like it, it takes. It's a, it's a brain. It's a muscle. Um, so I, I just want to thank you guys so much for tuning in, Kelsa, yeah. Golden Age. I love, I love having you guys back on here as always. Thanks. Uh, you guys I'm are going fantastic. to go play the long dark somewhere on my okay. stream. Yes, 
and I also want to I want to do a quick shout out. Um, I want to do a shout out to my um, all my my hosts here: uh, Ciro Kama, Adam Goble, uh, Kelsa, uh, Golden H, AP Gaming. Uh, love you guys so much. Love that you 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 give me give me all that love. You you shower me with with uh, opulence. Um, and, and, and my chat, everybody, everybody here, um, you know, Signor, uh, Nanosphere, uh, Spike Maw, um, uh, I forgot his name, Gay something, uh, what was it? Gay Kiwi. Oh. Yes, uh, Gay Kiwi, uh, thank you guys, uh, everyone. Enjoying tempting your chat. Yes, I know, you, you, you taunt, <laughs> you taunt my chat, Nick, mm-hmm. thank you for tuning in, everybody who's just sitting here and also quiet on the sidelines, you know, I love you so much for, for tuning in. And listening to us and, and watching us play these games here, um, that's it's super awesome uh, that you guys come out here and, and, and support the stream, uh, support the shows. Uh, hopefully, hopefully this this inspires you to go check out this game to get this game. Uh, just Google Ross Common Heart of the Deer Unicorn. Uh, that's Deer Nicorn, like like unicorn, but deer, uh, like like the animal deer. Um, that's that's that stuff. If you go to Fall of Magic and if you want to go to try to purchase Fall of Magic, you will find Life on Mars. Um, it's the same site, same spot. Uh, I'll also put a link in it in in the VOD in the in the show notes. Uh, so so thanks guys, thanks everyone so much for tuning in. I hope you guys have a great night or or morning, or or anything that have you. Um, everybody, thank you so much. It's always great to have you guys. So take care. Uh, good night. See you later. Yeah. See see you guys. Uh, catch you guys on the flip side. So see ya.